everyone. God bless you. This is Simone V. Hope you're all doing well. God bless you guys. I know this is a little earlier for abiding, but like I mentioned, I don't have a schedule for it because of my schedule. So I have a bunch of meetings later, a couple. So God wanted me to release this to you guys. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence, Lord, that those who would be on the replay, that they would be encouraged and blessed, those on the live. Hallelujah, that this would permeate their hearts, their mind, body, and spirit as we meditate, we abide, we read, and the washing of your word over their life, over their mind, body, and spirit. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for a new day, a new dawn in the life of your people. That no matter where they are, no matter what's going on in their life, their circumstances, situation, that you create a new day every single day. Hallelujah. Every single day. Father, I ask you to cover this live. I plead your blood over the airwaves. Hallelujah. And over your people. God bless you. I see you as you come on. God bless you. Father, we just thank you for the gift of your spirit. <laughs> the spirit is so sweet and so loving and kind and gentle. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, Tanya from Cape Town. Amen. <laughs> I can't wait to visit Africa in general or South Africa everywhere because I've never been. So, one day, soon maybe. <laughs> God bless you guys. So, Father, we just thank you for your spirit. We love you so much. He just wants us to thank him, hallelujah. And just know he's good no matter what. He is good no matter what. Hallelujah. God bless you from Michigan. Perfectly imperfect. God bless you. <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. <laughs> Father, we ask that whatever you want your people to receive from this word today, that you would impart that to them, Lord. That they would see you, they would feel you, they would know you. Hallelujah. That they would continue to trust in you, to trust in your word. That you are faithful. He is faithful above all else. Hallelujah. Above all else. Hallelujah. And as you can see, it says, come to me and I will show you great and mighty things you have not known. Hallelujah. And we know that comes from another scripture, but that's what he said to me a couple hours ago for this. He said, Come to me and I will show you great and mighty things you have not known. Hallelujah. <laughs> Confirmation. Amen. Because <laughs> at first I was like, he's like, trust me. Like I always trust him because I don't look at what I'm reading, you know, and he just drops the word that he wants to say. And then later on and I was like, oh, okay, it's about faith, which goes hand in hand what we're about to read. But it'll speak to many of you. Hallelujah. And this is an hour again because he's pouring out his spirit so mightily upon all flesh. Hallelujah. If you keep, you keep, you saw 333 today. Amen. The Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And that's when he, when you see that, he's like, come, that's when he's like, come away. I need to talk to you. <laughs> I want to spend time with you. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Perfect Game Perfect, for confirming that. Yes. God loves you so much. His word is so powerful and potent and may continue to bless you and increase your faith. Hallelujah. Increase your faith because when you're baby, like he said, it's perfect and perfect, you know, sometimes you get, you have so much power. You're like, yes, I'm all for Jesus, you know, and you go... And then something happens because obviously God is testing your faith and he's, you know, putting you in pruning seasons and the enemy will come and test the word God has put on your life, right? And put in your heart. And so this is the testing of your faith, right? And the seeds that were planted in you so long ago, 
even before you even knew God, right? Some of you, right? Um, but he was always there. He was there the day you were born. <laughs> he was there the day you were born. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, coming out of all sin because when you sin, you open the door to the enemy and then you, it clouds your vision, it clouds your understanding, it clouds you from hearing God, right? Because God loves you, but what it says in scripture, right? Be holy as I am holy. And so, you know, he doesn't want anything to block, to hinder your hearing, your walking with him. Hallelujah. And he will do things supernaturally in your life when he woos you. But then he calls you to be obedient by reading his word and knowing his truth. Hallelujah. And knowing his truth. So, Father, we thank you for the ability to abide, to obey you, because this is why the very nature of obedience is the type why he wants you to obey, because he wants to tell you great and mighty things, but he won't. It's like, you know, a best friend or, yeah, a confidant. You wouldn't tell just anyone your deepest secret. So, God has to be able to say, see, he can trust you now. He knows, but he needs that to be pulled out inside of you and he wants you to work that in your character that he can tell you something and it might just be for you or he can tell you something and you know he wants you to wait and so but God is always looking for people to come close and to hear what's on his heart he's not a respecter of persons okay so don't ever think you lack this or that and you can't come close he wants you to come close. And he wants to tell you great and mighty things that you have not known. But he has to clean some things out first. He has to clean your heart to a certain level. Like we're always continually improving and growing in the Lord. But there are different levels, right? You know, I talk about the inner court, the outer courts, the Holy Spirit. You know, it's the same thing with with the Holy Spirit and what he reveals to you because also it's about your level of maturity your level of what can you withstand it's it's weighty some of the revelations and knowledge hallelujah the, the revelation and knowledge hallelujah yes he will take his spirit now or your spirit like for instance if you're in sin he will lift your spirit out your body <laughs> and put it back when it's time when you obey him but he won't leave you or forsake you. He knows if you're his. Remember, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, he just said. And I was going to say in the palm of his hand, but he said the Lamb's Book of Life because you came to Christ Jesus and he knows your heart. So he will continue to woo you to come back to him, to pull you, to draw you, right? Trust me and, and don't let the enemy lie to you about that any differently right to bring condemnation and shame but there is a point of maturity you must come to right and sometimes that takes years so you know god is quickening a lot of things in this hour the, the that part is the people he's talking about like who are literally outright doing witchcraft and they're using their gifts for divination and craziness and they know what they're doing and their god has been warning them over and over again and he and they're not listening okay so don't and he will warn you enough so you know <laughs> i'm about to do this so obey me like they've had plenty of warning so you know he doesn't want you to be fearful in the sense of like we fear him we reverence him but fearful in the sense that oh i you, you know you can't clean yourself up god help me help me help me and he sees your heart you're trying versus you know you over here you know you're doing wickedness and you just using god's word or you just spitting on god's people and you're not repenting that's there's a huge difference hallelujah there's a huge difference and so you know he's like come to me because i want to be close to you you hear me calling you so just block out all the other voices 
all the other noise you hear. I say that all the time on the channel. You cannot think you're going to hear God clearly and where he wants you to go in your life if you are constantly having messages in your ears to try to figure it out from people. Like they can, God will send you a clue, right? He might tell, hey, go listen to Simone, go listen to this person, that, whomever. But, and then he'll say, come away, close it out. That's why the morning hours and the secret place every day is so crucial because you need to be able, especially in this hour, to rely on God himself. Because just a simple example, God forbid, okay? God forbid, you know, the internet went out for a couple hours or the day or whatever. And you're supposed to go somewhere or you're supposed to do something. You need to know and trust you heard the Lord and that you know it's him leading you. And so he will put you through these tests and trials so you know you hear him. Not based on secondhand information you got or you got from someone else. That you got a revelation from him directly. And yes, he'll bring a confirmation through a prophet or you know whomever. Or, and you know, but you need that's what I pre I teach you that you must have a relationship with him. There should be no mediator between you and God. That's why Christ Jesus died. So you could have direct access to him. Even in your wickedness, even in our sin, he says, come to me and I'll clean you up. I'll clean you up. Just come to me and let me continue to mold you and prune you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, and, and because he wants to come from a place of love not he always starts in a place of love now he knows what you need to move you to obedience but our God is loving and kind and just and he has patience he is long suffering he is long <laughs> I mean he gets it all <laughs> that's why we give him the glory because you know, none of us are perfect in every part of our life, in every moment, in every thought. That's why you pray, you repent, you rebuke, whatever. Now, there comes a point, like I, I said in my testimony, and this is why I love God, where when he awoke my spirit, my mind quieted. I don't have racing thoughts anymore, like I did when I was younger, you know, or just internal. And I thank him for that. It's just a quiet. And that takes him purifying you and awakening his spirit in you but you have to want to maintain that and cultivate that hallelujah hallelujah so you just continue to release and that's why all these principles matter and why romans also we're gonna you know as you hear the word is so powerful because it cuts right to the point and it you know paul was so direct because he's like, I want to save your soul. I want you to hear God. I want you to be able to have a direct relationship. Hallelujah. Not out of condemnation, but out of his love. He just loves you. He just loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your peace, your grace, your mercy, and for all the prayers. I know I see the prayers. He sees them. And we'll pray over them after we read. And, Father, I ask you every petition that's been lifted up already that you would, you would answer them. But you've already answered them that they would see, that they would understand, they would heed your instructions to clean out the noise so they can hear you and that includes people around you hallelujah that includes people around you that are trying you're, you're trying to get advice no you need to get advice from the holy spirit and oh and then when he answers you because he will answer you will you trust him that's the point like i said on the live yesterday the point of obedience. He takes you from obedience to obedience to obedience. 
glory to glory to glory hallelujah yes beautiful you have to be like a child that's you know and i'll say it now because for those who've been abiding when he first sat me in front of this camera he made me sit in front it's, it's multiple reasons why i'm in front of this map i'm not gonna say all of it but the one of the first things holy spirit was like and i'm reading to you guys he's like yeah how do you enter the kingdom you must come to me like a child right and he's like yeah we become children it's like i'm reading to you in a classroom and god has done so many amazing things even just in a month a half a month in healing in releasing things to people the testimonies i just had a sister you know, bless me and then email me about how this and the fast have blessed her and just other things and release even financial things that were taken from her or withheld. So when you abide in God, he takes care of you. He does, you know, that's what his word says. It's in Matthew 6 and 33. Seek first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added on to you. Hallelujah. So we must become like children hallelujah not necessarily in children in terms of innocence in terms of obedience like children are so obedient they they just right they to their to them their parent can do no wrong at a certain point but you know and that's how god wants us to see him hallelujah and to rest in his word and trust him and believe him. And the more you obey him, the more you will trust him because you really, you know you hear him. You know he's walking with you. Hallelujah. And you stop leaning so much on people, on voices telling you this or that versus God first. And then he will use people, things, whatever, signs to confirm it as much as you need. Hallelujah. But when you mature, you won't need all those signs. Like I told you yesterday, all he had to tell me was show me my pen. <laughs> all he had to show me was my pen. And I knew I could have been like, oh, Lord, you want me to come sit with you? Oh, Lord. Okay. I knew immediately. Why? Because I... I walk with him. I knew immediately when he showed me this pen, okay, what it was. It was about this. It wasn't about I got to come away with him more because I know I do that. Right? So you have to balance what you hear and what you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the more you obey him is what I'm saying is, is that you will know and you're your, your spirit's going to testify, your, you know, your gut, your, you, this leaping, right? You've heard of like the baby leaping. So when he gives you an instruction, you're going to be like, okay, I got to go. I got to move. Hallelujah. I have to obey him. Hallelujah. So he will quicken you. He will quicken your spirit. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you for your word as we read and we get and we abide in you. So again, I'm using the ESV. So if you want to go, we're going to read Romans 3 and 4 and Proverbs 3 and 4. Hallelujah. Romans 3 and 4 and Proverbs 3 and 4. Then what advantage has the Jew? Or what is the value of circumcision? Much in every way. To begin with, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What if some were unfaithful? Does their faithful, faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? See? By no means. Let God be true, though everyone were a liar. As it is written, that you may be justified in your words and prevail when you are judged. But if our unrighteousness serves to show the righteousness of God, what shall we say? That God is unrighteous to afflict wrath on us? I speak in a human way. By no means. For then how could God judge the world? But if through my life, 
God's, my lie, God's truth abounds to his glory. Why, I, why am I still being condemned as a sinner? And why not do evil that good may come? As some people slanderously charge us with saying, their condemnation is just. What then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under sin. As it is written, none is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth shut may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been made manifest, has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put for, forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from from the works of the law or is God the God of Jews only is he not the God of Gentiles also yes of Gentiles also since our God is one who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith do we then overthrow the law by this faith by no means on the contrary, we uphold the law. What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? For if Abraham, and that we're in, we're in um, chapter four now. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift due as his due, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those who, whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Is this blessing then only for the circumcised? or also for the uncircumcised. For we say that faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. 
How then was it counted to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. He, signed the, he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he had, was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised so that the righteousness would be counted to them as well, and to make him the father of the circumcised who are not merely circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs. For, faith is, for if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but there is no law, but there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the inherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence, existence the things that do not exist in hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations as he had been told so shall your offspring be he did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body which was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of sarah's womb no, unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteous, righteousness, but the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trans trespasses and raised for our justification. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3 and 4. Proverbs 3 and 4. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Wow, I just have to pop. My Bible says 777 on that page. <laughs> My son... Do not despise the Lord's discipline 
or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves, as a father the son in whom he delights. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom, and the one who gets understanding. For the gain for her is better than gain for, from silver, and her profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her hand, right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. The Lord, my, by wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps broke open and the clouds dropped down the dew. My son, do not lose sight of these. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, and they will be life to your, for your soul and adornment for your neck. Then you will walk on your way securely, and your foot will not stumble. If you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, or of the ruin of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence, and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come again. Tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. Do not plan evil against your neighbor who dwells trustingly beside you. Do not contend with a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways for the devious person is an abomination to the Lord, but the upright are in his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Toward the scorners he is scornful, but to the humble he gives favor. The wise will inherit honor but fools get disgrace. Chapter 4 Hear, O sons, a father's instruction, and be attentive that you may gain wisdom, gain insight. For I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender, the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, Let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get insight, do not forget, and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will keep you. Love her, and she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. And whatever you get, get insight. Prize her highly and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a graceful garland. She will bestow on you a beautiful crown. Hear my son and accept my words that the years of your life may be many. I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the paths of uprightness. When you walk, your step will not be hampered, and if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evil. Of the evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on, for they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong. They are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. 
They do not know over what they stumble. My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance. For from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the left or to the right. Turn your foot away from evil. Hallelujah. Now here ends the reading of the Lord's word. Hallelujah. And it ties so well into yesterday. Right? When he said, you know, walk with the straight and narrow path. Right? And that's what he said at the end of Proverbs 4 here. Do not swerve to the left or right. Right? Put away crooked speech, devious talk. Yesterday I talked about he just came out. He was talking about gossip and slander and, you know, in the church in particular and everywhere. That he hates it. Hallelujah. So put away all those things. Hallelujah. And when he says in Proverbs 4, verse 25, let your eyes look directly forward. That's like just like when we say focus. Right? Do not look to the left. Do not look to the right. Just keep your eye on Jesus. Keep your eye on Jerusalem, right? On the task he has you doing or the, you know, whatever instruction he's last given you. Hallelujah. Whatever instruction he's last given you, focus on that. Hallelujah. Meditate on that because he is faithful, just like Romans told us, right? Abraham, it was, what did it say? See, God chose Abraham. That's why I said, but he chose Abraham before he was circumcised, right? And you can say that before he was even made righteous, basically, okay? But God chose him just like, you know, Abraham is a representation of Jesus, if you will, right? Because Abraham, because of Abraham, like Roman told us, you know, the circumcised and the uncircumcised could be accredited for their faithfulness now. Right? Not because of their own works. And it's the same for us with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Right? It doesn't mean, just like it says in Proverbs, that we keep on sinning, we keep on doing wrong. We, no. There is no excuse for it. That's why we say repent. That's why God tells us to repent. There is no excuse. But he says, I've already made a count. I've already made a way. Hallelujah. I've already made a way. And so come to me by faith, right? Just like we read, lean not on your own understanding. Holy, lean not on your own understanding. Holy, and that's why he said today, come to me and I will show you great and mighty things that you have not known. But you have to have already had these foundations of the faith rooted in your heart rooted in your walk not out of striving but out of obedience because you love him hallelujah and you want to abide in him and if you do want to do those things you have to remove certain things from your life like the word i gave yesterday i i thought i was gonna do a whole different and I, it's been sitting there like it's about the things you have to get rid of you have to get, and I'm talking spiritually, emotionally. I'm not necessarily talking about physical things, but there are, might be physical things he tells you to get rid of because it, it was a gift from somebody. He doesn't want you to have it anymore and it's blocking you or whatever. But a lot of it starts from the heart first, right? In the spirit. Hallelujah. <clears throat> yes, we have to be rooted and grounded. And that's how you can be ready and prepared to receive more revelation and wisdom and understanding from the Holy Spirit. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. 
I always have to sneeze every now and then. I have my AC going, so I'm like, it's all good. So, he just wants you to rest, okay? It's not about striving, it's about obedience. The more you obey him, the more you read his word, the more you, you know, get out. It's not a religious thinking. You're doing it from a relationship standpoint. Call it a relationship. And again, the other key when he says to focus, don't turn to the left or right, is about not having all these voices, people, opinions, advice, right? Cloud your judgment before you hear from God. Hallelujah. And this is why we talk a lot, we preach a lot about being quiet in the seasons that you're building or God is instructing you to do something new or he's, you know, moving you out of the wilderness, whatever it is. Because you don't want to be led, right? No, I know that. Most people don't, obviously don't want to be led astray. Hallelujah. But in order to hear him directly, you need to do that then. You need to quiet the voices. You need to quiet I mean, people in your physical spaces, I'm not, you know, and yes, if it's online too, but a lot of times people will quiet the online, but then they don't quiet the people they're sharing with. And you can't do that. You cannot tell everybody everything. <laughs> Most of the time you walk this walk, you can't tell nobody until God gives you that one person or, you, you know, your partner comes along, your husband, your wife, whomever. That's it, right? Because... The vision was meant for you, for your life, right? When we talk about the greater revelations of the church and the movement of the church, that's different. But when it comes to your personal life, your personal walk, you have to guard that. You have to guard your relationship. Hallelujah. And he will show you great and mighty things. And this is the hour that the things that he's showing many of you he wants you to produce. He wants you to do it. He wants you to step out in faith, right? Lean not on your own understanding of what you think, you know, will be the result of your obedience. Just obey him because you love him. He will always take care of you. He will always refresh you, renew you, revive you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, Nana. <laughs> yes. He gets all the glory. This is all him. He loves you so much. And that's my heart. I just want everybody to hear from God. Know his love. Know his peace, his joy. Hallelujah. And that takes, it does take sacrifice. It's not, you know, like I said, the, the, the things you sacrifice, most of them anyway. Are things he he never wanted in your life in the first place, you know, meaning like if it's people that's just taking from you or a direction or a place you shouldn't be in or live in or you know whatever, but for a job you shouldn't be in, right? Because he will always give you greater. He will always give you better. Hallelujah. And he wants you to behold his glory. He wants you to behold him. Because he will take you from glory to glory to glory. Hallelujah. Remember, he's not a respecter of persons. He just wants your faith and your obedience. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your word, which is always refreshing, always reviving. Amen. Father, I lift up every prayer request. But those who would hunger and thirst for you, that you would fill their hearts, their minds, their body, their spirit with spiritual food, with good nourishment, literal food, hallelujah, that you would lead them to. It's okay, Rhonda. <laughs> Watch the replay, I know. Father, I ask that anyone that needs healing, healing in their bodies, Anyone that needs a breakthrough in their, their court cases, we we ask that you would, Lord, we know that you see it, sit in the highest court in heaven. Hallelujah. And that you turn every court case of your people in their favor. Hallelujah. For your good, for your glory, 
for the highest good in their life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let God vindicate you. Many of God's people have been, you know, misused by the legal system. But God, if you stand back and obey God and let him do his work, let him vindicate you. Hallelujah. It will come out in your favor in Jesus' mighty name. It will come out in your favor in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for restoring families. I thank you for restoring households. I thank you for restoring your image. That's the purpose of the family, his image. Hallelujah. We thank you for restoring anything that was stolen from the enemy. Everything that the cankworm and the locusts have eaten and stolen, he has to return it a thousandfold, a thousandfold, hallelujah, in Jesus' mighty name. So you stand back, you stand back and watch the living God, hallelujah, as he moves, because this is the hour of his children. Do you hear me? This is it. You're not going to miss it, just... He's saying obey him, okay? That's all he's saying. In anything he asked of you. And the primary thing he just said again is to come away with him. Come away with him. Hallelujah. Make time for him and he will make time for you. Always. Always. He is faithful. Hallelujah. So God bless you guys. I love you. The Lord loves you infinity to infinity <laughs> all right guys so you can if you have any other requests or anything you can email me at trinitylovecenter at gmail.com and i will see you tomorrow again these will be in the last days the last days <laughs> the day okay lord <laughs> the, <laughs> should I say that? the days of visitation has come he said last days y'all okay well we know we're in the last days my God. Amen. God bless you, Bitcoin. God bless you guys. Thank you for showing up and abiding. He sees that. He honors it. Hallelujah. And you're going to binge watch. Amen. Yeah. It's, you know, it's his word. So it always will wash you, cleanse you. Hallelujah. And then release. You know, like I said, people give me testimonies that Certain things were released to them, whether it's finances or just healing or, you know, he knew what he was doing when he did this and, and the corporate fast and we'll do more. So, all right. God bless you guys. I love you. Lord loves you. We'll see you soon. Shalom.